In this video, I'm going to start looking at examples of finding the symmetry adapted linear combinations for molecules. And so in this one, and then also in the next video, I'm going to be looking at cyclopropanyl cation. And then in following videos, I'll look at other molecules as well. But we'll start with this one. And so the resonance structure that you usually see for a molecule like this would be what we have going on here where we have this positive charge here that's sort of moving around the the triangular the triangular shape here and then this double bond is moving as well always opposite that positive charge and so we essentially have two uh, pi bond forming orbitals going on here and there is sort of sharing that that electron density between all three of them at the same time and so we will actually look at what the symmetry adapted linear combinations for that look like and so the cyclopropanyl cation is a d3h point group which has this character table here and so this is just looking at sort of uh, sort of kind of obliquely at the molecule and all of the different uh, symmetry operations we can do. And so these on the corners here are the p orbitals. And so we have the, the phi 1 atomic orbital, the phi 2 atomic orbital, and the phi 3 atomic orbital. And so we see we have these places where we have the C2 uh, perpendicular, um, the C2 perpendicular rotations as well as these uh, sigma v reflections here we have the c3 principal axis the s3 inversion axis or uh, improper rotation axis rather uh, and so th those are the symmetry operations we have for it so the representation for this uh, is this gamma sub pi here and I put the sub pi there because we are just looking at these three p orbitals here that form the pi bond we're not interested in this case in the sigma bonds or the uh, sort of orbitals that are canceling each other out with the bonding and antibonding orbitals we're just looking at these three p orbitals here and so uh, our gamma sub pi is this 3, 0, minus 1, minus 3, 0, 1, which ends up being these two irreducible representations added together. Where those two irreducible representations are coming from this table right here and here. And so this gives us our gamma sub pi here equal to the A2 double prime plus E double prime. And so we're going to use that projection operator that I talked about in the previous video. And so we will use the projection operator for the A2 Dummel prime here. And so the first thing we want to do is sort of act the symmetry operations on each of these. So we first do it onto the uh, phi 1 here, then the phi 2, and the phi 3. So uh, what we have going on in this table is what each of these phi's transform into with each of these operations. So for instance, if we just do the identity, then phi 1 will stay as phi 1. But if we do a C3 rotation, we see that this phi 1 will sort of rotate around and then it will go to the phi 2 position. So this becomes phi 2. Whereas if we did it twice, it would go there, then to here and become the phi 3. And so we put a phi 3 there. And so we can go through all of the symmetry operations and get uh, these for the uh, for the phi 1, the phi 2, and the phi 3. So regardless which one of these we act our operator on, we're going to get the same result. So we can just use the phi sub 1 here. And so we do our uh, operator here, uh, the uh, projection operator which is this up here so we already have the, the, from the table that we did these symmetry operations but then we also need to multiply it by the character here which is the character coming from that row right there so the one one negative one negative one negative one and one but of course we have to do this one 
twice and we have to do this one three times and we have to do this one twice and we have to do this one three times and so we have the one 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 so those are from the identity and then the two from the c3 here uh, then we have this minus one this minus one this minus one minus one minus one minus one which come from the three minus ones right here then this minus one then these two minus ones right here then we will have three more positive ones uh, so the other thing to notice is that we have these negative here in parentheses for when they are negative up in this table right here and so when we sort of combine all these together add them up we end up getting what we have in the box right here uh, and so that is uh, we have this phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3 and so we can normalize so we do this normalization here so this n 1 squared here it times the integral of our our uh, linear combination here squared and so we end up so we sort of foil this out and we get this but uh, this will be one this will be one and this will be one for these squared ones for the other ones will be zero and so we have this all equal to one so this will be three if we divide both sides by three we end up with this right here so then we take the square root and we end up with this one over the square root of three and so the normalized wave function for the symmetry a2 double prime is this so that you might recognize that from other videos that i've done where we've found where i've just sort of said this is what the sort of group orbital is uh, but see this projection operator is now how we found this uh, but there is also an easier way to think about how to uh, normalize this so the normalization factor is the reciprocal of the square root of the sum of squares uh, of the coefficients of the phi 1 and phi 2 and so the coefficients for it are just 1 and so we just add up 1 3 times we take the uh, so that gives us the 3 then we just do the the reciprocal which is 1 over 3 and then we just square root it and so uh, that's where we get the 1 over square root of 3 all right so now we want to do this for our e double prime uh, and so I'll just do this for the phi one so we're doing the same thing as we did up here but now I'm just showing the table uh, for the phi uh, one here and so these are what happens when we act our symmetry operations on the phi one using the PE double prime uh, projection operator so then we do the same thing here where we take these coefficients from the table so the two the negative one the negative one uh, so that it comes from here the two the negative one twice then we'll have a zero then a negative two then a one twice then zero and so we uh, we add those up and when we do that we end up getting this right here and so uh, then after normalizing which uh, we have this 2 squared plus minus 1 squared plus minus 1 squared which is 6 so we get this 1 over square root of 6 times this right here and we could show that this is orthogonal as well where if we did this uh, integral right here that uh, that we would end up getting 0 for that all right, so since the we have an e double prime representation this one actually needs two bases for the representation because remember the e's come from that two-dimensional uh, uh, irreducible representation and so this will actually have two bases for the representation because it's a two-dimensional vector uh, so to find the second one we do the symmetry operation on the function uh, which will either convert it into a plus or minus of itself into its partner or into a linear combination of itself with its partner so we do the c3 operation on it so we 
uh, right here. And we just sort of uh, move these around based on where they would end up after doing a rotation. And we end up with this. And so it must be a linear combination. And so we subtract, uh, we subtract some uh, multiple of this from the one that we just got. So this one that we just got, we subtract uh, this one that we got from above times this minus one half from it. And so we end up getting what we have here in red. And after normalizing, we end up with this, uh, which is orthogonal to both the psi one or the psi two and the psi one. And so this gives us our symmetry adapted group orbitals or our sagos. Uh, if you will. And so these are the three here, which, like I said, you may recognize these because I've sort of just uh, just said that these are the uh, group orbitals in past videos. But now we see using these projection operators how we actually obtain these. There is uh, an alternative method as well. And so we could do this by using a rotational subgroup of our axial group, uh, since that either preserves the degeneracy or lifts it in such a way that the correlation with the parent group can be made directly. So we'll use the C3 subgroup of our D3H. And so this is the C3 character table right here. And so we'll put epsilon in for the the e to the positive i2 pi over 3, and the epsilon star for the e to the minus i2 pi over 3. So when we apply the projection operators, uh, which we will have these three on our phi 1, we get these here. And so this one uh, obviously should look familiar. That's just uh, for our a here. But now we have these two right here for our two uh, e characters here, are two E uh, representations, and these have these complex numbers in them. And so we want these in terms of real numbers. And so we can use a linear combination of our E's. So we have this one on the left here, which is just this with a plus, and then this one here, which is this with a minus, and we also have this I in the denominator there. Uh, and so we have these two uh, linear combinations, which uh, they have this, you know, square root of two here, because, you know, if you squared these, then you should get just half for each of them. Uh, but we can discard the square root of two since we will normalize. Uh, and so then we have our uh, projection operator for the P E1 and then for the P plus the projection operator for the PE2 acting on phi here. And so that gives us this right here plus this right here, which is uh, just these two things from above. Uh, then so we can just combine the like terms. So we have this 2 phi 1, then we have this epsilon plus epsilon star phi 2, epsilon plus epsilon star phi 3. And so we can use that uh, this. Euler identity here for both of these, uh, that this this e to the uh, complex number up here is equal to the cosine plus i sine, or the cosine minus i sine right there. Uh, and so we have that this epsilon plus epsilon star is equal to the cosine plus i sine plus cosine minus i sine. The two i sines will cancel each other out. And so we get this cosine of or two cosine of pi over of two pi over three, which is just negative one half. So we have two times negative one half, which gives us negative one. Uh, and so we have this uh, for the with the plus version here coming equal to this right here. Uh, and then we do the same thing for the other linear combination, which was the one with the negative in the i in the uh, in the denominator there. And so we have our epsilon minus epsilon star, epsilon minus epsilon star. Uh, and so this time we have the cosine plus i sine minus cosine plus i sine. So these cosines will cancel each other out after we distribute this negative here, turning that into a positive. Uh, and so the i that's in front of the signs here will cancel out with this one in the denominator here. 
So we end up with the 2 sine of 2 pi over 3, which is just the square root of 3 over 2. So these 2s cancel out, and we get the square root of 3 square root of three, uh, and so we end up with this right here, but ultimately after normalization, uh, so this uh, will just go down to right there. And so we just get this right here, which is exactly the same as what we had above when we use the other method. So this right here. And so both of these methods will work for getting our symmetry adapted group orbitals. All right, so in the next video, I will continue looking at the, uh, the cyclopropanyl uh, cation, and we'll actually find sort of the relative energies of these different, uh, these different group orbitals. Uh, so anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.